Welcome to Flory Models, I'm Philip Flory. Well, congratulations to Michael Zazueta. I hope I pronounced that right, Michael. We know better as Michael Historian on the site. Michael has been a member since, uh, it would have been October the 16th, 2009. So he's been with us quite a while. He was picked completely at random from our giant um, fifth year prize draw that we had this month. So he gets obviously a full set of all the uh, skinny sticks, the sanders, uh, the buffers, the polishers, the skinny sponges, full set of washes, our latest uh, DVDs that we've got on sale now. So we've got obviously the Red Arrows Hawk, the Transall, the Mustang and the uh, Tomcat. That's the new HD versions. We also gets the sticker, Flory Models pen. We've got a little pen here. And one of these, which are gonna be the very much coveted uh, Flory Models polo shirts, as you can see, modeled by myself looking very posh and also on the back they have uh, flory models like that so as you can see lovely job and also he wins the lifetime membership here with flory models as well so congratulations to michael a very much a worthy winner uh, for that and i'll get this all off into the post you uh, probably today or tomorrow depending when the courier picks it up so it should be with you sort of early next week so We've got Telford coming up in a few literally days time for me. I'm filming this here on Tuesday afternoon, so we've got a few days to go. Uh, a couple of things you might be able to see here. Da, da, da. We have the shuttle, which is looking like a monster. Literally, all I've got to do is unmask it uh, and the shuttle is done. So it's a complete monster and we'll be talking about that a lot more when we come back. I just, if we just move some of this out of the way. Oh my God. We've got a couple of kits reviews coming up to show you in a moment. So some of these must have ones that uh, our friends at Revel will be selling no doubt and uh, a lot of the distributors will have on sale at Scale Model World on Saturday. The other thing as well, I'll just mention it here, the, oh, for the shuttle as you can see behind me now. Uh, we wanted to have something a little bit better than that display base you can see on at the moment. Now the thing is, if you go on the internet, uh, there's a company that actually makes uh, what I thought was cardstock for the actual uh, launch pad itself. Now it comes in three uh, flavors. You've actually got the crawler, which drives it from the actual assembly unit up to the launch pad, okay? Which has got the launch pad sort of on the top of it, so it takes it all across, okay? And then you've got the tower unit, so it's three. You've got the crawler that goes underneath, you've got the launch pad we have here, and then you've got the tower. Now, to set that off, I thought it'd be interesting to have there something a little bit more. And I looked about, you know, looking at some photos, scratch building it, and then I thought, well, look, you know, somebody's done the effort for me, so what we'll do is we'll buy uh, the cardstock uh, launch pad itself. So it hasn't got the crawler, it's just literally the pad, just to jazz that up and really finish it off. Now, I was expecting a load of card to turn up, to be honest. What we've actually got is 40, so let me just check here. 42 sheets of paper. And now, apparently, by lots of bending, gluing, PVA glue, and everything else like that, and a couple of pens, uh, you turn this off into a launch pad. So, uh, as you might be able to see here, uh, running through some of these on the, the overhead, you can see it's pretty, we've got joining strings to go together, and obviously what, so we've got photo realistic um, renders, I would call them, back in the day. But uh, as you can see, apparently, all of this goes together to make what looks like uh, and is a very, very nice launch pad. Now, I've never done anything like this before in my life. So, um, I'm probably out of my depth, and now really I've only got three days to build it. So we should have a lot of fun like this. But it's just to say, it did turn up, it wasn't cheap, but I do have to say, it did cost $22 to get here, hence $22 on the postage. It's available on eBay, if you just put in their STS uh, launch pad, it'll come up. And obviously they do other ones as well, because you can get ones for uh, the Apollo missions and everything else. Is it gonna go together? Am I gonna get it done in time? Come and see me on Saturday at Telford and you'll see. If it's there on the stand you see it behind me, it's no I didn't. If it's on this, it's a miracle. So anyway, I went out and bought some kits. So we'll start with this one here. Never been opened, never looked into it. Now you might remember this is the Raphael M from Revel 148 scale. There's a couple of other ones available. You can go out and buy another version of this, okay, which uh, is just the normal version, I do believe, okay. The M obviously is the maritime version. Uh, versus the other one. There's also another couple of flavours available for you if you wanted to down the, I'm just seeing if we've got it here, Hobby Boss route. If I just get through my stash. Oh. 
here it is as well. Now, trouble with the Hobby Boss one, um, obviously, well, let's just simply say it's not as detailed and up to date as probably the French one because, you know, let's face it, Germany's next door and I'm sure they can do their research a lot more. This particular version is what I would call the pre-production version because it doesn't have the chaff uh, and flare bays which are situated down here in the back, nor did the early version of this kit either. So let's have a look and see exactly what they've done. As I said, I've never looked in this kit before. Here's me knife. Okay. So your usual pull-out flip box. Okay, we have got some very, very nice crisp styrene. So if we just hang this out. Now, if this is the bit where it says it comes with racks, and that's it, it would be quite funny. I'm hoping there's a bit more to this bit than that. Now, I have built the Hobby Boss version, uh, and if you go back to the old Pro Modelers days, it's in there, okay, as a photo build. So, having a look through, we have got nice, firm, crispy plastic. We've got that sawtooth edge, quite nicely detailed with raised riveting uh, on the back edge here. Let me just move this in. Okay, and as you can see, we've got pretty much nice detail around. We've got no sign of flash anywhere on the gates or anything else. Nice riveting, very nice detail around. We've got the gun bay in there as well, looking on the insides. We've actually got it saying down here, 1999. Now this is where it's going to be interesting. This is, looks like a rebox of the original one with hence a bomb rack, which could be this bit here. But anyway, from a kit point of view, we actually have more racks we've got down here. I think this is probably the extra sprue. So we've got dual ejector racks uh, instead of your sort of triple, or maybe you could make that into a triple triple ejector racks with the front lead one in as well. We've got some nice uh, detailed GBUs uh, and fairings and everything else. Again, very smart, very nice laser guided bombs. We've got no ejector pin marks in nasty areas we'd have to worry about at all. So that's a very nice sprue. Tail unit, again, nice detail. We've got webbing effect uh, in the plastic itself. Um, speaking to an engineer uh, about this the other day, and apparently it's different cooling. It's how it's cooling down. The plastic in the mould gives you this webbing, uh, and it looks like we get different colours of plastic. It's all in this thing, so as I say, we don't worry about that. We've got no flash anywhere, very nicely detailed missiles, very nice detail in these engines. I don't know how close I can get the camera down into you without losing, but as you can probably see here, these engines are absolutely exquisite. And whilst we're here, you can probably see We've got very nice detail, we catch it in the light, on the actual tails, but generally just looking around, it looks to be all okay. We're quite happy with how that actually is. It's quite a nice kit, this. Now we have, so we have semi-recessed uh, chaff and flare pods which go in the back, and that was the difference. The other one was just flush straight across, okay? Nicely detailed bay underneath. And again, as I said, if you want into, you know, your riveting and your bits and pieces like that, you might be able to see we've got some very nice detail going on underneath this one. Some very, very nice detail indeed. Again, no sense sign of flash, everything else. Very nice touch, never seen this done before, but this here, this little red lump, prevents damage to an aerial underneath. Brilliant, very nice work, impressive work there, Revel. Uh, ejector, we've got seats here, we've got wheel wells, all look very nice. Cockpit itself isn't too bad, looks like got quite a nice seat in there. You could probably get away with not replacing the seat, but definite, because you've got all the bits with it. The front canards are linked, so obviously by wobbling them you'll get both together, which is a nice touch. Nose is just out of the way there. I would actually say that's a very, very nice kit indeed. Just having a look for the decals. Again, we've got nothing fancy with the decals, but what we have got is faded back insignia, which is a very nice touch. How many times do you do your model and it's all lovely and you've weathered it in and then you put your decals on and they look like they were born yesterday? It's nice to have them dulled down. It saves us having to take them back a bit, which you can obviously do with a little bit of pastel uh, or pigment dust, things like that. But certainly, very nice done. Like that, we've got weapons decals as well as that. But as you say, for the French Marine one, it is very, very nice. As you imagine with Revel, let's face it, all the instructions are all just the same. If we just pull this out a little bit, 
you can see it down here. So we've got a little bit of information on some parts that aren't used, but 90% of them are. And then just running through where it all goes in. Opening up things, having the cockpit all open. As you can see, very, very nicely kept, nicely laid out. Instructions are pretty basic, shall we say, but they're uncomplicated, as in they're not totally on top of each other. You've got your weapon system and your fit. You do fit triples onto these, although I think you only ever see doubles uh, in real life, if I remember correctly. The nice fuel tanks as well. We've got the bulbous extended range fuel tanks. And as you go through, and a host of decaling call-outs and things like that. So as you just say, you've only got the one option, three options you've got. So you can either do numbers 15, 32, or 28 with these. So if you wanted to pick out exactly which one you wanted to do, normal call-outs in here. I have to say, from a kit's point of view, and obviously with the price on this one, I have to say it is somewhat of a bargain. We do like this one. So if we just pop these all back in the the bag just a second just so we don't lose them all and whilst I do this I do have to admit the other day I couldn't find the, the actual instruction seat or the decals for a particular kit and it was only when I opened up another kit showing somebody that I found they're in there that's when I do these shows and I forget about them and pop them all back in just whilst we're here transparencies horribly done they are chucked loosely in a bag which is horrendous this other bag sorry I missed it uh, so on here we've got gear um, and you've got, uh, I don't know what that's, obviously a centerline tank, I do believe, but obviously not used in this one. We've got a targeting pod, uh, the, the arrestor hook, things like that in here. But the a bit of a no part, really don't like that, is you've actually got the uh, clear parts just jammed in a bag like this, which are going to roll around. You could say it's not going to go, but they're going to scrape on the inside. So, whilst they get loads of brownie points for things, they lose a few for sticking those in like that. So, very nice kit. I would go out and buy it because it's quite a bargain as well. Very nicely detailed. Right, up next, one of these. Now, this here is the brand new Lynx. Now, this is the Mark 88. Been speaking to people about this. Apparently, you can build a few other marks from this one, but certainly it is more the German version straight out of the box. Now, this particular kit is around about £17 for a 130 second helicopter. Let's face it, we all paid more than that for the airfix version. So, in here, what do we get? Haven't seen this for a while. White style. So, having a, a brief look around here, we actually have, with all helicopters, you can imagine, they're incredibly complex for their size anyway. Um, it's not like an aircraft where it's nice smooth lines and they can be molded very easily. With aircraft, you do tend to have this thing of, you know, you have to mold all these little assemblies and go through them. What I see immediately is we've got very nice detail up here with the rotor head assembly uh, and things like that. We've obviously got various multiple parts, which I can't see off the top of my head uh, exactly what they are, but I'm just looking through. It all seems to be very nice. I'm assuming this little bit just back here is supposed to be here, uh, but certainly it does look nice. No problem with that at all. So we've got no flash showing through. It's not as nicely done, if I'm honest, as the uh, Raphael. It doesn't look as crisp. It doesn't look as smooth. The plastic is more bendy. Um, it looks softer moulding, I think would be my way of describing it. Okay, again, multiple parts in here. We've got everything from 50 caliber guns to ammo feed chutes, more interior work. Uh, looks like we've got the sponsons for the wheels on the side out here uh, and all the other bits and pieces. I say bits and pieces, but I really mean it on here because half of these I haven't got a clue what they do. But I'm just looking from a technical point of view. They look to be very nicely molded. I've got no ejector pen marks in the wrong places. It looks quite nice. Fuselage, now I know what one of these is. Okay, so again, I don't know. We've got nice molding on the underside. Don't get me wrong here. This is obviously gonna be the belly plate that goes in on the bottom, but I don't know, it's 130 second scale. Um, having been working on the shuttle recently, uh, another 130 second scale, big stuff. You expect to have better detail. Okay, the shuttle, we know it's 1985, but this is brand new. I don't know, I just thought it would be done better. It could be it's moulded in white. I don't like white. To me, it's a horrible thing, but 
they say it hides, but when you look at some of the plastic, the way it is, and if you hold it up to the light, you can see daylight through them. Um, so we've got very thin parts, which I presume you're going to be opening up holes and everything else. But as you can see, if we just bring the camera right in, in here, we've got quite nicely moulded detail. All looks okay. As I say, if you look down at the fuselage section, all seems to be all right. So anyway, we've got the clear parts in here, which I won't get them out because we all know what they are. They are very clear, very nice. Again, we've got multiple bags rubbing up against each other. Stop doing that. Put them in separate bags. Spare a penny. We all pay an extra penny. Okay, blades and such. So we've got a couple of torpedoes down in here. We've got seats with harnesses pre-molded in them, which is quite a nice touch. Again, it's one of these things where it's like, you know, the bits you're looking at, there could be anything, quite frankly. But we've got seat design, we've got some uh, crush facilities on the bottom of the seat, some survivability seats, okay, some back seats, pretty basic, some other bits. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I haven't got a clue what any of them do. Okay, so we have... Um, if, for the guys who were following this, if you remember, I queried about a dent that was halfway down the blade of a Lynx. Okay, and I couldn't work out if it was the mold line or if it was the blade. Okay, now, um, quite frankly, everyone said, no, it's supposed to be like that. So I believe you all, uh, and this has them as well. So it's quite a nice touch. It's like the blade is kinked. Um, so it goes along and slight, got a slight bend on it on this last edge. So these are the big paddle ones that they tend to have that were running along it. You can feel it in there. The blades are very nice. Again, nice detail all around them. Um, no sign of flash, mess molds, ejector pin marks in horrible places or anything else like that. So that's all very nice. That I believe will just be the same, which is now the back end. Now, as you know, I don't like to go online and listen to everybody else when they start going on and, quite frankly, slagging off every kit that's ever manufactured. Because we all know there's no such thing as a perfect kit. And we are modelers and not assemblers, guys. But everybody has keep mentioning about, if we start with them, the tail rotor apparently has no riveting detailing at all. Yet apparently it's supposed to have riveting details. Quite correct, but that's why we have riveting tools. So if you wanted to, you could put them back in. I know they've got raised rivets, but you could do recessed rivets. Nice instrument panel just down in here, which is a very nice touch. So that looks nicely detailed and everything. We've got various parts going on in here, which are gonna be lumps and bumps for the outside of it, warning receivers, things like that. Uh, so I must admit, it is very, very nice. Some very nice molding going on in here. It's just, I think it's in the white. With the white color, it just, I don't know, just doesn't look right, shall we say. So we've got the bottom of the housing there with the radar housing in there. Again, very nice. Blade on the tail is molded all in one part, and we've got various parts all coming off of here. Again, no flash, no sign of any problems. Some quite complex uh, seating systems going down here. More seats, floor plan, I'm assuming, we'll look at it in a moment, instructions, you're gonna build the interior and then you're gonna come out and build the exterior onto it. We've got another instrument panel there, so we have two types of instrument panel. Let's just go back and just have a look and compare the both. So we've got two types of instrument panels there, so we're assuming there's multiple versions. If they're in the box or not, we're not sure. Okay, tail system. Obviously you can have folded or extended, depending on which tail boom you want to put on, okay? So that's the thing to that one. Various other bits going on there well. So from a kit point of view and a technical point of view, all looks very, very nice indeed. If we have a look at the old instructions now, we can find out really what this thing's about. So, decal sheet. Now comes that one's orange and this one isn't. So we're assuming you've got to spray all of this very nicely into orange before you can then come along with a decal sheet here and put them on. So that's gonna be quite technical to do. So um, let's hope there's a normal version that we don't have to do it. But no, very nicely done. Uh, da -da 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 -da. It's GMBH and Co have printed these and they do look very nice. Very little carrier film, although some of them I've got the tiniest little white specks on them, like this up here, okay, and apparently, and it's quite a large piece of carrier that's holding all of that on, so it might be interesting to see how they go in, but very nicely done with a cap, again, stick a staple in your 
sheet. So going through the usual call outs, I mean, my word, this is busy. So we have, uh, looks like we're only got, oh yes, hold on, we have two versions going in here. We can either do the Mark 88 standard links or you can do the sonar equipped links, which probably means you'll have a hole in the bottom. Uh, which would be quite interesting. So we've got two types of cockpits going on in there, uh, but only one Gibbon. So I'm assuming you probably are going to see other flavours of this kit coming along, different versions, so you should be able to do other things with it. Okay, so as you can see, going through here, it's what we were saying, you build the interior, and then have the cabin all done, and then going to bolt the exterior onto it looking quite technical this is actually very nice here this is the sonar set going in here very detailed so you could make this a very detailed kit with a little bit of scratch building a little bit more wiring and things like that going in you could actually do very nicely with this so as you said pretty straightforward going in i'm just looking for a version with the tail folded now either i'm missing the beat here or they are Well, I'm just going to skim forward here because I don't get this at all. Right, am I missing something here or are they not mentioning that the tail folds? No? Okay, for some reason in the kit part we have quite clearly, I've got bits coming off already, unless I'm just imagining it, but we have here a folded tail. Unfortunately, there's no instructions for a folded tail in this instruction sheet. So somewhere we're assuming, if you wanted to, you could have the tail as a separate fit. But this is the problem. We have the tail here, which is a different version of the tail. So what we're basically saying here, we have a sprue which is designed for another aircraft coming along at a later date. So this should be quite interesting. Now, I'm no Lynx expert. As I said, I've just opened this kit. I've never seen it before, and I haven't read much on the internet about it, apart from everyone banging on about rivets on the tail. But just looking at it, it does look like um, perhaps there could be another version coming along with a folding tail because it's a different tail um, and we haven't got the back half of the boom in the kit. So this version comes with the whole tail. I think there's another version coming out. Obviously we've got different types of cockpit in there as well. So I assume from our friends at Revel there is another Lynx on the way to make somewhat of the Lynx family. But as you say, going through the kit here, we come through and that's what we're saying, we are going to have to spray, if you want that cat on there, this orange and mask extremely cleverly to marry up with your decals that are going on. One little tip for this, um, to get around the problem, photocopy your sheet, okay? Cut out the lines of where the decals actually are in paper, obviously off your copy, and then you can put them on and then mark it exactly where it's gonna go up to. And then that way when you're spraying, you've got it exactly the same as the decals that are going on. So anyway, as you can see, right the way through, we have, just two versions of the one. You can either have it with the um, the cat on the side, of the links on the side, or you can have it in their normal sort of colors. And then obviously we've got the usual call outs for all the bits going on there. I have to say, again, we're talking 17 pound for a kit like this. Uh, you can probably get it even cheaper on the net. A kit of this quality is absolutely fantastic. You know, you know, I know I've been going on about kit prices recently and everything else, but I must admit, you can see here exactly what I mean by it all. It really is a bit of a bargain when you're talking other kits costing an absolute fortune. Now, a kit that does cost a little bit more, which I can't remember off the top of my head, is this one. Okay, now this is the uh, HE219A7 Late A5 or A2 Yoohoo. Okay, now we've got a few on these. Now, German Night Fighter, again, out of my comfort zone with this one, but hey, at least it's got a proper box. So, what do we get in the box? Sorry, we're running out of room here. We have very large aircraft, obviously we're talking 132. Okay, and I hope we can get all this in. Let me just push this slowly over there before it all drops off the edge. So, if we just have a look what we get in the bags.
Do we think this is an automated system where we put them in the bags, or is there a little Chinese lady who does it? I know. Anyway, multiple colours of styrene. So we've got two different colours of styrene in here. Large, big, flat sprues, as you can imagine. So we've got engine nauticals, very basic. We've got some uh, iffy panelling, shall we say. We've got traces of flash on the end here, and this tail edge is nothing short of horrible. You know me, I hate to be a thing on this, but you can probably see just down in here, if we just bring this in, this is what I mean. When I look at, and when you hear me say, oh, it's a nice crisp kit, it's got um, lovely detail and everything else, right? Okay, this isn't it. As you can see, we've got quite a nasty rough edge running down here, and we've got flash all over the edge. There's two things that can cause this. One is a warm part. As far as I'm aware, this is a brand new kit, so it's not going to be that. Secondly is the moulding um, plates. When they come together, there's a gap. If there's a gap, that's bad tooling. Somebody needs to be really uh, throttled about that. Again, we've got very rough, jaggedy edges all down the back here, and we have hence flash everywhere. And I'm looking at this sprue. Somebody's been around here cleaning it up because that would have joined onto the wingtip uh, at some point, these two, all right? So from a kit point of view and a technical point of view, I don't think it's actually particularly very good. But that said, we've got no riveting detail whatsoever on here. We've got a tiny few around here, but none of the overall wings have got with it. We've got a line running down through the wing here, and I can physically feel it. So this has been moulded on the back here and in fact we have got a date on this 2012 but it's like this this isn't good guys come on look we know the kits are cheap but don't take shortcuts i'd rather pay the extra but you might be able to see it just down in here i get the camera in i can be honest here guys i've got a bit of slight technical hitch one of the main bulbs we run off of these these are 550 watt bulbs has packed up on me so unfortunately i'm down to put in 100 watt in it for the moment uh, until they turn up tomorrow. But anyway, you might be able to see down in here, I don't know how well it's going to pick up in the light, but we've actually got, right where my finger is, a line running down there. Okay, uh, but I can feel it with my finger. That's the thing. It hasn't on this one, but we've just got it there. There you go. Perhaps again, I'm being too picky. Let's check the other wing. The other wing doesn't have it. This one has it here. So there we go, depending on what your uh, opinion is on this. But we've got them there. Again, we've got no riveting detail particularly anywhere. It's just panel lines. Again, we've got some very sloppy work here. Uh, plenty of flash all over it, which in the smaller parts will probably come back to bite us. Now, if we just do one of the bigger sprues, we can see down here. Now, looking at the picture on the box, it's got rivets all over it. Okay, looking at the sprues, again we've got traces of flash pretty much everywhere, but the actual parts aren't okay. We have got riveting detail down the side here, which is quite a nice touch. Okay, so it's a long old gangly thing this one. But again, all seems to be okay. Ejector pin marks, shallow but all in the right places. Checking on the other one. No problem on that one at all. So the main fuselage is good. So start building up here, you won't see me in a minute. Okay. So there we go, not too bad. Quite a nice detailed cockpit. We've got various instruments, lumps, bumps, as you'd imagine. We've got side walling detail, which is quite a nice touch. We've got radio stacks, uh, and obviously it's a night fighter, so it is gonna be using a form of radar, things like that in there. They are all very nice as well, so that goes in. The belly, obviously we've got the gun trays in the belly and things like that. Got the ejector pin chutes, are all nice, clean and crisp. And we've got some nice work over here with harnesses molding into the seats. We've got wells, things like that. Again, we've got detail on the bottom of the hub, so I'm presuming the wheel comes up in there. The wheel well is the bottom of the actual front wheel well. So that's quite nice. Okay. Instrument panel is blank. Okay, there's no actual instruments in there. You've just got the bezels, uh, but that doesn't look too bad at all. The gun shoots uh, for the belly, uh, they look very nice, the actual gun ports. We've got some air scoops in on the front, they're quite nicely done, they're pretty much seamless in there. Some seats, uh, again another radar scope for looking down on, quite nicely moulded. Uh, actually not too bad, we're getting away from the other problems now and everything else. It's going to be movable tailplanes and things. 
So next up is the So we've got engine cowl, quite nicely moulded. It's a little bit shallow, you might want to just pop around and uh, rescribe them out of there. It's the trouble when you're moulding something in one like that shape, that's why uh, a lot of companies do them in two. But as you say, it's all there. It saves it having a big seam line or something to deal with. Uh, prop, quite nice. Nothing you'd write home about. Some nasty ejector pin marks on the back, but it does have a very nice big spinner on it, so that'll hide all of those. The actual uh, rudders themselves, nicely moulded, some nice detail. We have got a little bit of detail all going in. Nice spinner cover, we've got no signs of anything there. No ejector pin marks in nasty areas. The main wheels themselves, two hubs. So you're gonna be hubbed, which you could paint them black and then pop the hub in, quite a nice touch. Um, as I say, it's a tricycle landing configuration on this, so you are gonna need a little bit of weight up the front. Nice touch here on the doors because we've got no ejector pin marks on there at all. They've all been stamped out from the edges rather than leaving nasty ejector pin marks in there, so that's quite nice. Yep, actually we're looking up. Uh, again, we've got the aerials, nice touch that they're separately bad. I'm not gonna get them out because we don't wanna wreck them, but so we've got the aerials very nicely put on there. Just be careful when you snip them off, okay? Because otherwise you can have a real problem. We've got the other one, which is going to be a mirror. So, so but you've got the engine grills in there as well uh, as that one moves forward. So that's all very nice. So let's have a look at the old instructions. I just do have to mention um, a couple of the members recently have had faulty parts or have had errors with their kits and they've written to Revel and Revel have been right on the ball and replaced all the parts. It was a clear part that was faulty and then one of them had a mismold uh, and within a week Revel had had the part in their hands. You know, So that is absolutely fantastic customer service by Revel, I must just mention that. Kudos where it's due. <clears throat> okay. So there we go, we have the Iron Crosses on there, nicely decalled. Again, this is done by uh, GMBH and Co, which do do this, uh, it's like flat decals, which I don't know, it's one of those things, um, you either love them or hate them. Uh, personally, I prefer decals just to be a satin finish. I'll flatten it, I don't need somebody to flatten the decals for me in the first place. But anyway, we've got spinner ones as well, quite nicely done, right the way through, nicely in register and actually look very nice. So we can go with that. now. Instructions. Really? Okay, I've just got to mention this because I've just spotted it, which actually is coming quite clever. I haven't seen anyone do this before. This here, what you can see, is that instrument panel. Do you remember I said it's just bezels on it? Well, there you go. You get to put every single decal in there and on the sidewall. So we've got the actual main instrument panel. They're going to have these decals here, and then you have to come along and put these in, and then these on the sidewall. Brilliant. See, unfortunately, decal companies out there who make that. So if you start doing it, you'll put them all out of business. Anyway, back to the instructions. As you can imagine, as we were just looking at Revel's usual um, kaleidoscope of uh, information. So as you can see, going together, we're starting with a cockpit. Um, it's not as complicated as it looks honest. It's just they make it look complicated. Um, but as you can see, we've got various work going in here. I'm just trying to work out various bits here. So you say you've got, looks like the gunner uh, radar guy sits rearward facing in the cockpit. <clears throat> so as you can see, you're gonna need 70 grams of weight. Remember, always double what they say, just to make sure. Okay, so I would stick 100 grams in there just to make sure, because otherwise you are gonna have a tail sitter on your hand. Okay, guns going into gun barrels, depending on obviously versions, things like that. So if you want one or two guns going in there. <clears throat> in through the fuselage. Um, depending on flap positions, how you want the flaps, depending where you cut them, again, same with the back. Engines going all together, and the main gear wells uh, into those engine nauticals as well. You've got nice sprues coming out, or spars I should say. Again, nice touch running through. Movable, I don't know if I'm a fan of movable parts and models, because let's face it, once you've wiggled them half a dozen times, they fall off in your hand. But that said, it does make it so you can position them. So if you want to have them in a certain position, put them into position and then glue it so it holds it in that place. Having workable parts and models I never think is a good idea unless it's something which has got a proper join, a metal pin or something like that in there. But again, it's saying it about the rudders, the ailerons, 
uh, and things like that. So as you can see, working through, nice detail absolutely everywhere. I didn't realise what they were. These uh, tubes on the side are actually the part of the exhaust system coming off. I haven't seen one with one like that before. Main gear itself, quite nice and chunky. As I said, those gear doors are very nicely done because we've got no ejector pin marks in there. So then you've got this point back here where you've got literally aerials everywhere and it's showing you the different, they should be at 45 degrees. So you've got them front and rear radar systems, uh, various tail booms um, going through. So as I said, it'd be one of those ones which is a nightmare to transport. Okay, the camo pattern, the famous camo pattern. Okay, so we've got this real heavy duty mottling that goes on all over this. Now, if you have, I don't know if I've got it here, that's why I'm just checking. Sorry, I don't think I have the hand actually. Yes, I do. This is where these come in. Okay, these, I've had these so long now, look, it's all bent and out of shape. Anyway, mottle patterns, which are great because you just pop them on and then spray it and just keep moving them around. But this will give you this mottle pattern. Now these I had from Hannant's, I do believe. So you get like a wavy line, okay, and then different scales. So that's probably more like your one sort of 48 scale. And then these two, uh, a more sort of your 132nd but if you are naff and terrified about doing this sort of motley pattern that it has on these okay you can buy mottle sets and literally you just pop them down spray it and then move them around okay it's going to take you a while on something like this but if you're not trusting your airbrushing techniques mottle masks absolutely great and because they're metal they're absolutely fantastic for it and you can just keep using them time and time again as you move around and to be honest I've had those now donkey's years and I use them on 109s and things like that but this particular camo pattern as you can see extremely complex so you've got two options you've got the grey on the bottom like this one's got or you can go the whole hog and put the black on um, as you go through but again very nicely done we've got multiple options as you're running through this Okay, but again, I know a lot of people have been waiting for this kit to come out and I can actually say I'm not that impressed with it from a technical point of view. It's got plenty of flash on it. I've got mist molds on the wings. The rest of it, very nicely detailed. It's nice to see separate decals for the bezels and things like that. But again, I can't remember off the top of my head how much this kit is. I think it's around about sub 40 pounds. So you have got a hell of a kit for 40 quid. Okay, and that's what we've been saying about recently. So that's really it for us this week. Um, you can buy all these kits will be at Scale Model World and I recommend all of those, especially the Lynx and especially the uh, Raphael, absolutely fantastic. If you want to do a little bit of work and scratch building and a couple of little fixes on this one, this will be equally just as well and well worth being in your stash. We will be in Hall 1 at Scale Model World Telford this weekend. Please come and say hello. Members, remember, print off your little thing and bring it in. doesn't matter how it comes, just make sure you've got the bit of paper. Okay, it is on a first come, first serve, but we will be taking enough to cover us. It's just last year we sold out of them and then we had to make up other sets and things like that. Um, so we will be there. Unfortunately, I was hoping to have Hans with me here this week, but because of Hurricane Sandy, all the flights have gone to pot in the US and they're all put well behind and unfortunately he's not going to be able to make it over. So anyway, the rest of us will be there. So Steve will be there, myself, Mel will be there, Jelly will be there, and Steve, other Steve will be there as well. So please come and say hello to us, Hall 1 at Scale Motor World this week. Um, and if we don't see you, we'll see you again next Friday, where hopefully I'll be taking my camcorder with me. And if I get a moment, I'll have a quick run around the show and take you some video shots and talk you through exactly what I went on. I'll see if I can get any gossip as well. Hopefully the shuttle will be finished, um, well, with the stand, and then obviously give us a week. So uh, up this week, we've actually got part, I've got to think what you're on now, four, is it? Which will get you to boosters and tanks and things like that, painting, which are a lot of fun. And then you can start watching me go through the decaling process, everything else. I'm now going to start playing Origami Man and start to put that together. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing, so I'm not going to film it from I'm going to talk you through it point of view. I'm going to film it and just put the overhead above me and just let it run. So all blood, sweat and tears and everything that go into it. So you'll be able to see that one. So until next week, everybody, happy modeling and take care.